So let's say that Bob says for our key, we're going to use the password subscribe. Okay. So he sends over his message saying, let's use the password subscribe to Alice. Alice will probably agree and say, yeah, sure. Let's use that password. So now when Bob goes to write his message, before he sends it over, he will encrypt that message with the password subscribe. But the problem, okay, is that they sent over the key through that same channel. So if they trusted the channel to send the key over, they should have just trusted the channel enough to send the message over, right? If we can just protect that first key, then the rest of our communication would be fine. What's up code crew in this video, we are going to be diving into the basics of encryption. Now, I recently had an old friend reach out to me because he was having some trouble decrypting some data in his code base. And it came to my realization that he just lacked some of the fundamentals in how encryption works. So I thought it would be a good chance for us to go over it together. Now here, I'm going to go ahead and draw the two main people that are looking to have a private conversation, right? Let's say this is uh, Bob on the left hand side. This is Alice on the right hand side. She has a dress. Okay. And Bob wants to have a private conversation. So Bob goes ahead and he sends his message over to Alice through the internet, for example, right? So now the message is being sent over to Alice. Now Alice can then read the message and then respond to the message and her response will then be sent over the same method of transport that Bob used to send his message. So there's a risk here, right? Like even if it was by horse, horse carriage, you know, the horse could be, you know, kidnapped, right? Horse snapped. Or even if it was by mail, the mail could be intercepted. Or even if it's by the internet, the, the message can be intercepted. So let's say that there's this bad person, right? That's watching, looking to steal their information. So now what we would need is to have a key, right? So before Bob sends his message, he would instead say, Hey, let's use the password subscribe before we communicate over this channel. And then Alice would say, okay, that sounds good to me. Okay. Does this fix the problem? No, because the bad guy the man in the middle still saw what the key is. Hmm. So what if I wrapped that key with a different key? Well, then they would just see that key. Well, if I wrap that key with a different key, well, they would just see that key. And you see the problem. It's pretty tough to figure out the solution to this. So this situation that we see where they're deciding to use one key or one password to encrypt their data. They're using the same key to encrypt, and then they would be using the same key to decrypt. Okay. So let me actually go back. Okay. Maybe, maybe, uh, we should go over that in more detail right before. So let's say that Bob says for our key, we're going to use the password subscribe. Okay. So he sends over his message saying, let's use the password subscribe to Alice. Alice will probably agree and say, yeah, sure. Let's use that password. So now when Bob goes to write his message before he sends it over, he will encrypt that message with the password subscribe, sends it over to Alice. She will then take this message that was encrypted with the password subscribe. And she will then decrypt it with the password subscribe leaving her with the message, which she can then read. You see the password that was used to encrypt the message was like a protected casing on the original message. And the only way to unlock that casing was with the same password or key. Okay. So she uses the key to unlock the message. She can then read the message. Now they think, Bob and Alice, they think they're slick. They're like, oh, we're having an encrypted communication. We're having an encrypted conversation. But the problem, okay, is that they sent over the key 
through that same channel. So if they trusted the channel to send the key over, they should have just trusted the channel enough to send the message over. You see what I'm saying? So what they would need to do is wrap this key up in some way so that the attacker can't see it. And I'll just spoil it for you because to come up with a solution for that requires a lot of math. And that's called asymmetric cryptography. So in this example that we see, they are using the same key on both sides. It's symmetrical, right? If you cut it in half and you fold it, it's, it's the same on both sides. So it's the same thing here. The key that's used to encrypt is the key that's used to decrypt. They're using the same key on both sides, making it symmetrical encryption. So this approach, if you really look at it, it's pretty dope, right? Like it's actually like a really good solution because if the attacker didn't have access to the, to the initial key that was used to initiate the conversation, the conversation would have been secure, right? If we can just protect that first key, then the rest of our communication would be fine. So what needs to happen is we need to protect this key with encryption, but we need a key to encrypt it with. So if you use the same symmetrical encryption, you're faced with the same problem again, right? They're still going to see the key that you're going to encrypt your key with. <laughs> so the spoiler that I've been holding you on edge for for so long is asymmetric encryption. That's where you have a two key mechanism, okay? So you're going to have a public key right? I'll put a uh, pub and you're going to have a private key and I'll just put little p. Okay. Now the way it's going to work is we're going to use the public key for one party to encrypt the key with. And typically that party is the recipient. Okay. So if I want to send this key to Alice, Alice will also have two keys. She'll have her public key and she'll have her private key. Okay. We're going to go slow. So if you feel like I'm going fast, trust me, I'm going to repeat myself multiple times and you're going to get it. I promise. Okay. So we, we can agree, right? That if the attacker did not see the initial key used in our symmetric example, it's a secure communication, right? If we could just protect this key from being seen and then use that key for all subsequent communication, we have a safe channel. Okay. So we're trying to solve, how do we protect this symmetric key? So what we're going to do is use public key cryptography to fix this. So Bob has two keys and they're tied together by math. I can't explain that math to you. I'm sorry, but they're tied together by math. Okay. So Bob has two keys, a public key and a private key. Alice also has two keys, a public key and a private key. What Bob's going to do is he's going to encrypt the password before they start communication with Alice's public key. And tell you what, I'll even put like a little a by it so that you can remember. Okay. So this is Alice's public key. Now, when Alice receives this key that has been given to her from Bob, she needs to decrypt it, right? Because the bad guy's still watching. All he saw was some orange box, right? With a letter A on top, right? <laughs> you get the idea. He saw just some garbled mess. He did not see the key, right? So Alice now needs to decrypt this message. She will decrypt it with her private key. Okay. So her private key is going to be used to decrypt the message that was encrypted with her public key, right? Bob encrypts the password that he wants to send with her public key. She receives the encrypted password that was encrypted with her public key and using the power of math, it unlocks with her private key. Once it's decrypted, she has 
the key. Okay. So now Alice has the key and Bob has the key. Well, he came up with the key, right? He came up with the password to be used to the conversation. So now that they both have the password to encrypt their communication, everything proceeds as normal, right? Bob will write his message. He will encrypt it with the key that they agreed upon, which was securely sent over via a asymmetric encryption. Alice will then receive the encrypted message. She has the key from the initial handshake. She then applies that key and gets the message back. And everything just goes back and forth, just like that. This doesn't answer all the questions that we, that we need to have, okay? So this makes sense and it's really good for our communication, right? Because now, as long as Alice or Bob don't expose their private keys, the communication is secure. Now, if you're looking at this and you're like, man, that makes a lot of sense. First off, awesome, congratulations. But I also want you to realize that this doesn't give us the entire solution. Because let's say that we were going to create a chat app right? A place where Bob and Alice can have these conversations, right? And basically do this whole process underneath the hood automated. They don't even realize what's happening. Okay. So every time they come back to the app, they're going to expect for their messages from Alice and Bob to be there. Right? So as a person who's looking to make this type of app, there's a few problems because now you have all these encrypted messages stored in your database. Bob doesn't know what the true key that was generated for the conversation is. Alice doesn't really know what the key is. It was all underneath the hood. So now as a developer, you would need to store the initial key that was used to encrypt their messages. And you would also need to store their public key and their private key. And you start to see all of the responsibility how are you going to store the private key? Are you going to encrypt it? With what? A password? Where's that password gonna be stored? It's like you're just moving things back, you see? And this kind of just leads to the summed up answer of nothing's impenetrable. You wanna create layers of defense. This video would be way too long if I were to go into the most viable solution. That's another video, let me know in the comments below, say, interested in learning more about how to secure passwords or keys or whatever. And I don't know, we'll figure something out together. So I hope you guys enjoyed my uh, elaborate drawings. Be sure to smash like, subscribe, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.